Hello, Semper Squad, and welcome back to Semper Admin, your go-to resource for mastering administrative tasks. In today's video, we'll be covering miscellaneous reimbursable expenses as outlined in the JTR. Before we dive in, let's just quickly discuss why it's crucial for Marines to understand what this is and how they're utilized. Knowing what miscellaneous expenses are reimbursable, how you manage your finances effectively during official travel, this encompass, uh, ensures compliance uh, within the regulations and helps you recover costs incurred while performing your official duties. So the first thing that I just want to talk about is that this subchapter of the JTR is things that are not already identified elsewhere in the JTR. So this does not cover everything. These are just other miscellaneous types of requests that are out here. Now, on the right hand side, we actually have the JTR. But over here on the left hand side, I actually have an example to each one. So I have a pre little um, example of what it is, like a snippet, so you're not reading this entire thing. And then also just a little example of when it can be used. So I want to use both of these just as a help train full, uh, training tool for today. So we have a better understanding of what these are. Now, always remember that the JTR is constantly being updated. So you always do want to go back and make sure that you're looking at the most recent reference. But now that we know that this exists, this is where we can go to find it. So the first thing that we're going to talk about is the late payment fee of the government travel charge card. Okay. Now this is incurred through no personal fault of the traveler due to mission critical status. For example, when a traveler is unable to file a voucher due to um, circumstances specific to the travel or when the AO does not approve the travel within 30 days. So a couple things here. One, we have an actress that we're going to take a quick look at to see what this means. And then when you would click on this asterisk, this is actually going to go to that part of the policy when you would come here to the government travel charge card. So I'm not going to open that up today, but I do want you to know that there are some hyperlinks and follow on links for that. So as an example, if a Marine is out um, doing TAD and they either didn't put their partial payments in there, for example, or they finished up the travel, but they were in a status where they could not submit this and they started incurring these late fees. That's no uh, fault to that member. That's where this, uh, this type of situation would come in for reimbursement. So maybe they were going to the brig. Um, as soon as they came back, they got caught up, went to the brig, and they did not physically have the ability to do that. Or at the piece where the AO was sitting on this thing longer than they should have, and it caused the incurred payment. That's when those are reimbursable. So this is an example. The next one, an um, international transaction fee is up to 1% for the qualifying transactions used on the government travel charge card. Um, provider. So this is when you are traveling internationally. So whenever there is a transaction fee that converts from one currency to US dollar, the US will usually charge you a fee to actually make that translation. And because of that, you are able to reimburse those things because those are no fault to you. And that's just a normal piece of those um, of those expenses. So you want to make sure that you're doing claiming those for those actual expenses that are done. So that's what we want to make sure. So as long as it's an official expense, you want to make sure that you're trying to claim those expenses for that. And then here, a Marine traveling internationally incurs a fee while paying for accommodations or meals with the government travel charge card. You can use it for those pieces. So down here, the merchant surcharge of up to 4% on the government travel charge card or a personal charge card if the traveler is exempt from using the government travel charge card. So again, these aren't all government travel charge card related expenses. It's only for official reimbursable expenses uh, based on the uh, direction if you were told to use your government travel charge card or if you were exempt and you used your personal card. So a Marine um, charges uh, surcharge for a foreign merchant that used the government travel charge card to purchase those natural uh, necessity supplies. So you might end up having some of these things at foreign um, like 7-Elevens or maybe you go to a store that you need to get uh, personal stuff that's um, required and you get a surcharge, you can claim those surcharges on those costs. Four is a storage of baggage or property used for official business uh, when authorized or approved by the AL. Um, the necessity must be explained in writing. So this is usually where you get those excess baggage fees. Um, Marine stores additional equipment at a security facility while on temporary duty assignment. So that's just an example. Um, but usually when you have excess um, baggage, property, um, sometimes you might be at a location that has a need to store something at a certain location that's not in your room, and those fees are also reimbursable. Uh, five, foreign currency conversions, including such conversions if necessary, based on the currency exchange rate. And then this is where we're talking about a lot of those 
conversion fees that we've kind of talked about up here, but the international transaction fees does differ a little bit from the foreign conversions fees because this is what we're talking about, the currency, but this is the transaction for using an international fee, and this is up to 1% for that. Um, the local currency may not be reimbursed as a separate reimbursable expense, but must be indicated on the receipt as part of the overall cost of the old currency expenses. Now, to identify this, it's really good to have your government travel charge card or your, just your bank statement in general, as they usually will show you the cost of the local currency that it was charged and then how they converted that to the U.S. dollar. So, and Marina's uh, covered, uh, converts U.S. dollar to the local currency while traveling aboard for official duties. And that, again, can be also for those cash uh, changes, too. Down here for six, changes for immunizations, isolations, um, and other disease preventive medical um, incurred expenses uh, for testing that are required for official travel. If available through the federal uh, dispensary, medical treatment facility, or travels insurance covers the cost, then no reimbursement is authorized. So this is really big, especially when we had COVID, when you are required to uh, get those tests. And then let's say you went out to a third party, you went to Walgreens or Walmart to get your COVID testing. Now, if your local medical was able to cover that at no cost to you because of insurance, because it's provided by the medical facility, that's not reimbursable. But if it was one of the situations where maybe you were in a foreign country and you did not have one of those types of things and you had to get it done on the economy, that's when it would be reimbursable. And that's just kind of like an example of those types of things um, for that piece. And then a Marine gets vaccinated for yellow fever before deploying to an area where it's uh, prevalent. And again, and it was not authorized or available to be given at the local um, health clinic for that member without cost. Oh, I didn't mean to do that. We're gonna go back up here. I'm gonna come up to seven. Okay, the cost of birth certificate and other uh, acceptable evidence of birth when required for official travel uh, to foreign locations. So again, this is only for official travel. So if you're trying to get a passport for your children because you got assigned to Japan and you need to get that information, you can also claim those types of things there. A Marine needs a birth certificate to apply for a passport for official overseas travel, as you see there. Um, that's just an example of when that would be authorized. Coming down here to the next one. For eight, uh, guide services, when authorized or appropriate by the AO. Now, this one um, is actually kind of vague, as you can see here. So guide services, if it's part of that travel, if it's part of the official expenses that's needed for what you're doing, um, which does happen. Sometimes you're going out to do a site assist or a site visit out to a location overseas, and maybe you need a specific guide as part of that, um, that travel or part of you getting to where you're going. Uh, that's what we're going to look at. The same thing for the interpreter, which comes next. These two kind of go hand in hand, um, but are not really, um, always correlated between each other. But a Marine hires a local guide for navigating through a more remote area during the mission is one example for the guide service and then for the interpreter. A Marine requires an interpreter to communicate with the local officials during deployment is another example of those um, uh, costs of what you would do. But you always want to make sure that these are uh, calculated in that authorization before because it's uh, easier to preemptively think about them and say, hey, this is what I'm going to need for my mission uh, or my travel. Vice, coming back and saying, hey, this is what I did. Now you're trying to justify why you spent that extra cost. For 10, for costs related to the change in status or obtaining a visa, passport, or green card, one required for official travel, reimbursement is authorized for required photographs, mandatory uh, biometric fees, dependent fees, for example, the United Cl uh, Kingdom clearance fee, legal fees if required by local and customs um, for obtaining and possessing applications, um, other things like this, disease prevention, required physical examinations, things like that kind of already went up into the other ones. So this is where we're talking about more of those situations to make sure that you have the citizenship or the required paperwork to allow you to obtain those passports to go forward. Um, Marines need to get a visa for related photographs for deployment to a foreign country. This also happens a lot when you're an attache or an MHG, or even if you're trying to go to Japan. I know you need the NOPI passport, so that's where a lot of that can come in. So now we're going to come into the ATMs, those automatic uh, teller machine fees and locations, Oconus, only when the AO authorizes the expense in advance. 
and after it is approved through the Secretary of Process with no lower than an 06 or equivalent command um, approval. The traveler must document that the government travel charge card cannot be used for security or local uh, infrastructure reasons when traveling OCONUS. The reimbursement is lim limited to the fees that are the traveler could incur based on the amount of cash advance that was authorized in the travel authorization. So this is talking about those fees that um, come on these government travel charge cards or any type of card for that, but you would withdraw cash because that location could not accept the government travel charge card. Those are the situations, again, when you're probably in Africa, they might not have the infrastructure or even just the security to use your government travel charge card without possibility of fraud. And that would be your justification that you would annotate usually before it, um, you leave uh, for that piece. Uh, let's see, 12, the AOL may authorize or approve reimbursement for the following costs related to military working dogs. So the transportation of the military working dog with the handler in the cabin or as cargo, whether indicated by the handler's fare or when billed separately, kettle handling fees at the air terminal for military working dogs, the loading fees and the kennel handling fee at an airport or place of lodging for the military working dog, and cleaning fees for the rental vehicle when transport, uh, transporting the military working dog. So again, whenever you're in one of these situations, these are the different types of fees that you're looking at specifically to having the costs um, that are incurred because of the military working dog. So again, if a Marine uh, handling handler of a military working dog incurs kennel fees during travel, again, that's very um, possible, especially when you're doing commercial. Um, especially if you're doing rental cars, you'll get a lot of these military, um, these requirements to clean it because you don't want pet hair and stuff in that vehicle. 13, uh, let's go back up. The baggage transfer fee may be authorized or approved limited to the customary local fare and intermodal uh, transfers between authorized transportation modes. The necessity for the transfer must be explained in writing. So this is, a, this is a good one, especially if you're trying to deal with multiple modes or maybe you have split tickets uh, for your travel. So let's say you're going from one plane to an, uh, another plane without the same airline, or if you had to unload your baggage, you had to receive that baggage, go over to another terminal and go back in there for that baggage. Sometimes they might have a fee to just transport the information, uh, the baggage between one and the other. Or if you're going between vessels, so for example, playing the train, there might be a fee that is incorporated with you transporting that luggage from one place to another. So that's another good one that's out there. 14, a civilian employee may be authorized POV um, tax or license fees if required by the state. The POV must be used at the government's advantage. The civilian employee DPS must, uh, must not state that while he or she is on TDY. So, this is for civilians. As you can see here, this is not for uh, Marines. But again, if you're having civilians use POV uh, that is advantageous to the government, uh, then you can go here and look at that piece for their PDS uh, for that reimbursement. Uh, let's see, come down here to 15. The cost of the value added tax known as a VAT, exemption certificate used to exempt official travelers from paying VAT or um, excess taxes in foreign countries. So a lot of countries do have this VAT. Um, I know Europe does, some Asian countries do. And usually when you leave, you are able to get the tax exempt form uh, that are for main goods that are purchased, not usually for food and personal things. But um, when you're going out there, you can actually get those things reimbursed uh, for official traveler. But remember, these are only things that are already not reimbursed at the previous time. So if they're not reimbursed for any reason uh, for um, before you left, and then you still had a cost incurred, this is where you could reimburse for those. So a Marine traveling to Europe uses a VAT exemption certificate to avoid paying VAT on official travel. But again, if it is um, not done, you can claim specifics on, it's like a tax, for like a tax purposes on those official travel uh, requirements. So. Energy uh, surcharge fees for this one. If a Marine is staying at a hotel and charges uh, energy surcharge fees while TDY, and this is very specific to the country you're in, the hotel you're using. We don't usually see these a lot in the States, but if you're using a lot of power and they give you that surcharge fee because of certain things like that, that's where they would come in here and be able to get those reimbursed. 
Uh, the driver vehicle services when authorized or approved by the AO. So for example, a Marine hires a driver for transportation in a high risk area during official travel that is not contracted out or it's just an actual cost to that individual. They would be able to um, reimburse that by the AO, but usually these are, are in the prior planning. So you would have had that already identified on the front end and that should have been done on your authorization for that piece. Okay, now we're gonna get into some of the last few ones because we're only coming down to 20. 18. So 18 is a pretty interesting one. Um, expenses associated with the transport of human breast milk experience, uh, expressed by the service member or a civilian employee while on TDY. Uh, travel in accordance with the um, foreign travel regulation. That's the FTR that you have there and you have the sub uh, paragraphs. Human breast milk shipment may be authorized as a travel accommodation for special needs. Human breast milk uh, shipment may all, uh, only be authorized for TDY longer than three calendar days and up to 12 months from the date the service member or civilian employee gave birth, which is consistent with federal law. Authorized expenses may be reimbursed up to a maximum of 1000 per TDY trip, only when authorized in advance of travel um, on the authoriz uh, travel authorization and accompanied by all valid receipts. And then this is talking about that $75 minimum uh, rule that they had here, but it's not applicable. So this means all receipts regardless. Expenses may be included, uh, may include the following. The commercial shipping fees, packaging and uh, packing material is, are not authorized for this piece. Excess baggage fees and dry ice or regular ice. Expenses for the purpose may not include the cost of a rental vehicle. Travelers are ultimately responsible for arranging the transportation of their breast milk. Um, and for handling all related logistics, see service or agency regulations for more information about um, this policy. So a lot of information that actually came in here. So if you're going TDY or TAD uh, for more than three days, right, for longer than three days and up to 12 months, that's where you're going to start coming in here to start looking at this type of stuff that you can ship and get expenses associated with this. So maybe you're trying to send things out ahead of time. Uh, that you need to do, you're shipping things um, to and from. This is the kind of stuff that you need to make sure that you're doing ahead of time, making sure that you know your plan, making sure that you meet within the window that you have and that you're keeping all those valid receipts because you're gonna need all of that to make sure that you can get reimbursed up to that maximum of 1,000 for that TDY trip. So that's pretty interesting and a good one to know. 19. The cost of uh, quarantine lodging and meals while in a foreign host nation requires for the service member um, or the civilian employee or the dependents traveling on PCS orders to quarantine in a specific foreign hotel or similar facility mandated by the country before pro uh, proceeding to their PDS. This expense is reimbursable regardless of whether the hotel or uh, similar facility is geographically located with the PDS local area. This expense is not reimbursable for quarantine on the U.S. installations whether in a uh, U.S. government or commercial lodging facility. So this is a pretty good one, especially for uh, MSG, those SSJs, because they're all over the world. So a lot of times that a Marine will come into country and they were required to have some kind of ROM or quarantine at a location that was determined by the host nation. They said everybody who comes in here must go to this location to get screened, quarantined for the two weeks or however long that country deems and then that person's going to incur lodging costs. They might have costs for food. All that kind of stuff is reimbursable um, at, because of that location in that direction of that local country. Now, if you're coming on to base, so if you come into Japan and they make you stay at, on base at a hotel, whatever, that is exempt because that's U.S. government lodging. Um, that also has all that information that's there for that piece. So that's what you want to make sure that there's a difference between those. It's usually out in town on the local economy directed by that host nation. And now 20, uh, this one we're gonna talk about expenses associated with the transportation or shipment of human breast milk exp uh, expressed by the service member while on PCS travel during a uh, travel period. Human breast milk transportation and shipment may be authorized as a travel accommodation for special need. This can only be authorized for PCS travel occurred up to 12 months at the, from the date of the service member giving birth, which is consistent with federal law Authorized expenses may be reimbursed up to $1,000. So this is the same thing that we've already talked about up here, but they've expanded it for PCS. So this was talking specifically about TAD or TDY, that temporary duty. 
this is talking about for T80. So I know up here we kind of brought both in because I got mixed up a little bit, but these two things are two separate but equal type of reimbursements, just depending on your status. So a lot of really good information that we have here today going over these different types of reimbursable, uh, miscellaneous reimbursable expenses. Before we wrap it up, I just want to point out a few common mistakes to avoid or tips to keep in mind while working with this. Um, make sure that failing to obtain those prior authorizations or certain ex for these certain expenses can actually either delay or prevent you from re uh, getting reimbursed for them. So you always want to make sure on the front end you're doing the planning and that you think about everything that you're going to need ahead of time. Always come back here and read these to see which things that you need to do ahead of time or that you might not even think about as you're coming up on your travel. And then always uh, get approval from your AO for the reimbursable expenses to ensure that they are covered. So if you have questions, always ask or put them in here to make sure that they're done ahead of time. And then on the back end or as you're coming back off T80 uh, or PCS, keep all those receipts and documentations to substantiate your claim, especially for those miscellaneous expenses. Because as you see, some in here are exempt from that $75 um, minimum or max or minimum for that piece. And a lot of these uh, have very minute costs that also require um, verification of the receipt of what it actually is. So make sure that you're keeping all your receipts. To quickly recap, today we covered the various miscellaneous reimbursable expenses under the JTR, including late payment fees, international transaction fees, storage of baggage, and many more. Understanding these will help you manage your travel finances effectively and ensure compliance with regulations. That's it for today's video. If you found this content helpful or if you learned anything, be sure to like, share, and subscribe to Semper Admin for more instructional videos on the Marine Corps administrative duties. Feel free to leave a comment below if you have any questions or suggestions for a future topic. But until next time, stay motivated and Semper Fi.